uh, New Zealand first. Uh, we've just heard from Winston Peters revving up the crowd. Um, and Marg, you've you know, studied Winston Peters quite a bit. Classic Winston? Yes, um, I mean, uh, he will, as, as you've seen there, campaign on experience. And I think in this current setting, that would be sensible, where we have quite a light um, depth in both the major parties. They're sitting in the early to mid-30s. Um, there is certainly a, a rhetoric out there that, that might respond well to his common sense consistency, um, the, the playing to the nostalgic ordinary New Zealander right. that, that is looking at um, you know the major parties and, and may respond okay. well to but, that. But, but, but is there space, I mean, Ben, is there space for Winston Peters? I mean, he's been on a speaking tour, seems to be attracting some of the sort of you know, anti-vaxxers there. I mean, do you think there's space for Winston now that ACT has sort of risen up while he's been out of Parliament? Yeah, I, I think he's sort of a man caught between two worlds, and I don't just mean the sort of 21st and 20th centuries. <laughs> he's also caught between uh, the sort of what you might sort of say the the irascible part of the electorate the more conservative reactionary part of the electorate but who are less fringe and I think act you know, particularly regional New Zealand, provincial New Zealand, mm. Act have been very busy there. The recruitment of Andrew Hoggard, you know, Mark Cameron doing a lot of work there. So I think Act are really crowding them out of that mainstream space. Then the fringe, which uh, Peters has sort of reverted to and is trying to get in these du dusky halls, uh, you know, he's facing a lot of competition from innumerable kind of conspiracy parties there. And, yep. and I just don't think that there's room for him. But he's, so he's polling 3% at the moment, mm. Lara. Can we say that's not good enough, he's not going to come back? I think it's unlikely that he's going to come back, but there's still that outside chance. I think in terms of the polls, like there are a lot of arguments that you could make around the constituency he's trying to target and the fact that when they're called by a pollster, they'll go, ah, grumpy, hang up, that kind of idea. <laughs> you know, and that's like that shy Tories phenomenon in other countries where it's like, you know, the party that's a bit more stigmatised, you're less likely to say, oh, yeah, I'm voting for them. I mean, he's even trying but to But you secretly do the tick them, do you? Yeah, like that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's like probably better to ask the question, hey, do you think your neighbour would vote for the <laughs> New Zealand first? Yeah. I agree with with Ben that there's maybe not enough room for that. We've never in history been able to sustain many minor parties yeah. in that group. Um, but there is this growing research both here and overseas showing declining trust in institutions and New Zealand First is genuinely an anti-establishment party being out of Parliament. So there's a difference between uh, them uh, and that. It's, it's an anti-establishment party led by the former Deputy Prime Minister of New Zealand who was responsible for closing the border as the Ministry of, Minister of Foreign right, Affairs. Right, so you think that's a bit paradoxical? So, well, I, I, th I think <laughs> leaning into the sort of pandemic sceptics is, is a very right. high degree of difficulty for Peters right now. I, I just... I, but if you look at the polling, I mean, you know, the major parties are in the low 30s yep. and the minor parties are having a, a, yeah. a bit of a surge, Lara. So, I mean, is that, like Mark's saying, there's scepticism about the major parties. They're not really appealing and we have quite a lot of undecideds. Yes, yeah, so I always have this graph in class. It's like the cumulative, you know, the together, the sort of major party vote over the years. And, like, first we had got MMP and everyone was like, oh, minor parties will vote for them. And you can see all this decline and now actually the minor parties are starting to come back and we've mm. kind of got Act in the Greens as, like, big minor parties and yeah. we've got these minor, micro, minnow, whatever you want to call them. But I think also there's been a bit of a generational shift. So people understand MMP a lot better, increasingly so. It's been 30 years. You know, mm. the millennials are now 40. Yeah. And um, we kind of know what it's about. So and I you, think people are used to MMP. And you would think maybe the minor parties have hopefully learnt from past mistakes and are applying those lessons to coming up to the 10th MMP election. Right. That, that's mm. quite possible. But we saw it way back at Waitangi Day. Um, we saw it then, a very pronounced um, stealing of the show, if you like, of the minor parties and quite an underwhelming performance by the majors. Well, and we're seeing that play out now. 